What's going on, everybody? It is your favorite apostates again. I, of course, am McKay. And I'm Jordan. And I... Ooh. Ooh. What's this? Oh, is this a Satan's Ponzi scheme shirt that I finally got around to? And now you can purchase them. Oh, Jordan, what are you drinking out over there? Oh, is that a God sent me to be a feminist ass bitch mug that you can also purchase if you feel so inclined available now that the video is up? So, yeah, we finally got them going. You can check out our Teespring link in the the description if you want to check out we have a couple other designs and other um colors of shirts and uh, there is also a mentally unstable hoodie that you can check out by request a couple people have requested it all of the images jordan uh put together uh whether that be with already uh with licensed uh, artwork that we got but they all came out of jordan's mind so and Round of applause, Jordan. Uh, now that we have taken out a uh, page of the good old girl-defined self... Uh, promo. Self-promo. What do I always say? Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Uh, we can get onto it. Um, a lot of y'all got your tail feathers ruff- ruffled over our Norp and South video, and <laughs> a lot of you also seem to enjoy it. Um, uh, yeah, I, anybody who had anything to say about, oh, we didn't learn, guess what? Uh, I already got that when we left the Mormon church about how much, how little we knew. And nobody came at us with a, uh, argument about keeping kids safe or anything like that. So maybe that should have made the main focus. (laughs) Anyway. If you don't like it, I can't help you. Yeah, sorry. It is what it is. Don't stick around. Don't leave shitty comments. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're going to continue on our uh, little influencer deep dive, Mormon influencer deep dive. And today we're going to look at some Instagrammers. Um, I feel like the Instagram dynamic is a little bit different because the, uh, the family vlogging vibe is more like look at this it's raw even though it's not like it's more real and the instagram i mean instagram is the classic this is not real life it is the polished version of my life that i want people to oogle at kind of vibe so it's kind of like a really weird dynamic comparatively yeah do you have something to add jordan (laughs) so (laughs) The the thing that I want to convey with this video is with some of the Mormon influencers that we talk about, some of them deserve to be shit on. <laughs> so, and we talk about those. And we'll and, do it. I don't care. And we're not saying that these people are entirely awful people because I'm sure they're not. However, they do things that are questionable and things that are kind of shitty. And so when you do those kinds of things, you're going to get called out. And I don't know what to tell you. That's just what's going to happen. So, with these Instagram influencers that we're going to talk about today, not every single one of them is like a, oh my god. like They're problematic. Canceled. I can't believe they've done this. This video is more of a, we're we're looking at some Instagrammers that are pretty popular. Like, one of the ones we're going to talk about has millions of followers that you might not even know is Mormon. And so that's kind of really the examination that we're going to be doing today, because the people that we're talking about are primarily on Instagram. They have huge followings. And for the majority of them, at least the majority that I've seen in my research, McKay's done different research. In my research, the super popular ones keep the Mormon thing on the DL. Like you, you don't have to do like a ton of digging with one of them, but you have to do a lot of digging with another. Yeah. So it kind of just depends on the family, but it's interesting the dynamic that the the followers, the people that follow them, the the role that they play and how they portray themselves. Um, because you know, sometimes for a lot of them coming out. As Mormons, when you have a lot of followers like that, might cause you to lose them. Yeah. So it's 
you know, we've talked about Mormon stereotypes a lot on here. They're not always positive. So when your favorite million follower Instagram influencer comes out and she's like, I'm Mormon, and you guys have seen the shit that goes on in the temples, you're like, yeah. What? Or, or you've heard the rumors of what goes on that doesn't actually go on. A yeah. lot of people ask us if you consummate your marriage inside the temple, which is not true. But it is a pretty common misconception. So these kinds of things so. are floating around when it comes to it influencers so that's why i feel like some of them do a really good job of burying these things and not having it at the forefront um of what they're doing so that it doesn't impact their following yeah it's it's a wacky world it's wacky y'all for real and there were there was some uh and we'll get into more detail but there was some interesting patterns that i saw when it comes to um who is outwardly mormon and what they are sharing and who is not and anyway jordan wanted to focus kind of on the big one which just looking at the instagram profile makes me want to vomit (laughs) turtle creek lane you either love her or you hate her there's no in between just looking at her profile some of the people that i follow like friends or family members also follow her how many followers does she have yeah check that out do you know if she posted on um black lives matter stuff oh definitely not so she has six hundred and sixty five thousand followers only yeah okay so it's quite a lot it's quite a lot um, can we get a couple people to follow her so we can get that to 666,000 followers? <laughs> <laughs> so, if take you, one for the team. If you are familiar with Turtle Creek Lane, her name is Jen. They're, the street that they live on is Turtle Creek Lane. That's where the name came from. Um, they are Mormon. Surprise! Um, they They have five kids. So, but they're like adult kids now. Right? No, I think one of them is like twelve. Oh, so she still has at least one at home. I at least that was a one grandkid, if not two. Um, there's like an eleven year gap, I think, between oh between one of them. Um, doopsie. <laughs> is it like a? I think she could. Honey, get, I swear I got the vasectomy. <laughs> no, I think situation. it was she couldn't get pregnant. And then oh. she finally did. I don't know for sure, though. We're not shitting on that. That's just like information. No. We're just giving you a load down here. So uh, her husband, I think, sold off his company like some type of. It was a holdings company. I can't remember what. How I can't to remember. Finance or something yeah. like that. And I, don't, I don't know how the hell to say their last name is. Houghton, Houghton. I don't Houghton, know. Houghton, H-O-U-G-T. O N. So he sold it. G-H-T-O. They made millions. Um, she actually grew up here where we live in Utah. Um, they both went to BYU. Um, I can't remember what his degree is. She has a degree in English. Um, but I think that's Probably where they met. Or, or yeah, Business. something like that. So they are Mormon. You will not find anything at least in my searching on her profile like in her instagram feed specifically about the church on her website either in her about no a lot of people will put it in there like about or we talked about north and south they had uh like requested book of mormon on On their their website website. so different dynamic for sure how many times they don't have have dynamic (laughs) so far (laughs) um so they don't have that it's not on their website i looked on the about page it's not like hidden in there so from the instagram gathering that i did i did not see anything directly on her feed i know that she has mentioned it some of the time in stories however in the stories that i have seen it's like faith-based and Christian-based. Mm. So not exactly... Very nondescript. Yes. Not exactly identifying like straight out that we're Mormon, that they're part of Christianity, which all the Christians are like, ew. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you. So essentially with Turtle Creek Lane... 
she's extra. And we we beyond, have beyond she's beyond extra. extra. We have some things that bother me about her and her family. Um and we as far as I know, they're active Mormons. They're actively participating. The problem that people, and this is going to be a recurring theme of this video, the problem that people see is they're like, okay, well, Mormons wear garments, the, you know, the religious undergarment. And so many of these influencers obviously don't wear their garments because they're wearing all kinds of clothes that wouldn't be compatible with garments. And that is also the case here. Jen often wears things that are not garment compatible. But then she also wears very modest things that I'm like, oh, yeah, it's totally a That's Mormon a Christian outfit. Relief Society president-ass. Yes. Look. 100%. So there is, obviously, as is with most Mormons, there's nuance. But remember, when you go through the temple for the first time, you're given the garment. You're instructed to wear it, like, all of the time, with exceptions being doing it, swimming. There's no bathing. There's no literature that says the exceptions, is there? I don't. They I don't, don't think really. So. They don't. Yeah, it doesn't. There's no documentation of stuff. I like don't that. know. I don't think there is. But that's what they tell you when you go through. Is well, you're asked in temple interviews. You're asked if, if you wear it as instructed. It doesn't yeah. say like when. That's true. That's true. You're supposed to just wear it all the time. And then if you need to remove the garment, then you replace it immediately. After so there's some cultural the things with garments. Okay. So like, you know, if you're doing yard work, some people won't wear them like while doing yard work because you're getting sweaty and disgusting. So that's like a cultural thing. But for the most part, especially here in Utah, when we're talking Mormon culture, like people are checking, looking observable for garment lines when they're talking to people, judging whether or not people are wearing them and are active within the church. So a lot of Mormons will say, oh, everybody has their personal take on garments and things like that. But at the same time, you're not really allowed to. It's not really supposed to be a thing. Yeah. So we have a, a theme here that you will see with garments. But let's dive in to why Jen is so extra. And if you have not seen any of her stuff, prepare yourself to be blown away. Prepare I yourself. I am frightened. You're not ready for this. I'm telling you right now. 1,332 days to build. Welcome to day one of our home. What is this? The... Salt Lake City Temple, three thirteen hundred days. Meet Jen, everyone. Oh my God. The rest tour, the front of the house. So the inspiration actually came from my parents. We had visited. Actually, came from my parents. Oh my God, this. Was, I guess her parents were rich too, or they must have been. been I don't living know. Living in the Swiss Alps for off and on about seven years. I literally fell in love with the French architecture and decided we had to have it. So let me show you some of my favorite elements. First off, I love, oh, there's the turret. That happens to be my office, very classic French. Love Just so happens to be the office. Okay, well this is nauseating. So now you get a okay. feel for what the outside looks like. I'm gonna skip ahead. I just kind of stapled a couple of these videos together. Go inside. Welcome to day two, the oh entryway. God. There are so many things I love about this entryway. So I'm going to find out. Your three. head exploding in. First off, notice that the entire entryway is elevated above all the other rooms <laughs> in the Let's house. Let's point out her foot. We did this on purpose because for us, what we wanted to subtly say to anybody that comes into our home is you are elevated. You are important. Oh, brother. <laughs> we are so glad you are here. Says the person with the family portrait that's like a fucking five by four feet. Looks like straight out of shit. Holy Creek. shit. Seriously. Yes. It looks Notice like the roses. The wall color. And the wainscoting. Oh my God. Looks like Tiffany and company over here. Uh, it reminds me of uh, in Parks and Rec where they take over um, Nick. What's his face? The, can the candy company guy. Oh. They take over the 
the historic manor and she goes through and paints and the walls paints everything like, <laughs> blue <and> yes <laughs> leslie's in there having a conniption yes, yes. Okay, well... That's the entryway. That's the entryway. I don't want to look at it anymore, so I'm going to skip forward. Let's I go. just love this. Okay, staircase. we're in the staircase From now. The circular architecture to the details. Oh, in- there it is. Ooh. I'm going to zoom in on here. This is Good like catch. essentially a Mormon dog whistle right here. This is a picture of white Jesus. It's called the second coming. And he's With like white angels, white, only white angels coming down in a big cloud. It's by Harry Anderson. It is, is Harry. An- oh, no, it's Del Parsons that the Jesus is. No, is it Harry Anderson that paints the Jesus like himself? I don't know. Wow. God complex. Um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the things that you can tell. Hey, they're Mormon. Crown molding. I just feel like it that's the only the thing I've seen so far. So that's kind of impressive. Else that happens to you come pointed that out. Unreal. Well, okay. Oh okay. God. So we just watched her house tour, like without anything in it as it normally is. Okay. But that's not how her house normally is because Turtle Creek Lane became famous because she's an interior designer, decorator, because she goes ham in her house on every holiday. So this is why people follow her because she literally goes batshit. With decorating on holidays, and you're about to see her Christmas setup. This is just a regular Christmas decoration We're setup. Take ten seconds and just quickly show them this hallway. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. Check out okay, the adorable this pattern. Is, of course, the candy cane. How is this kind of shit together. livable? Also, like her shoes have bows on them. Nice. Her outfit and has to match what's going on. And this is her serving cute. platter for and all her little friends that come over and eat. What do they serve? Air? She doesn't. She serves sweets, but we'll talk about her food issues in a moment. Okay. Oh my god. This is the living room. Vomit. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. Just look at the tree. (laughs) If you follow her, I'm sorry. This is probably going to turn people off. Why? This looks like literally is a cluster. Christmas looks like, like I don't even know National Lampoon bullshit. Why? Why <laughs> this does? How do, does this look good? She thinks it does. I my her I, followers my brain think it does. Short circuiting. How she's gonna zoom in on the tree in a second, and you're gonna. I don't know if I want to. It looks like Candy Crush threw up. No, in here. please don't get don't get closer, please. Oh no. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. Why even bother with the tree? My OCD is like uh, inside my brain right now. Like, where is the gifts and what is the tree decorations? You obviously cannot see. This is disgusting. So. Anyway. So, essentially, she is Mormon extreme over the top. Um, Yeah. She... This is why people follow her. Like, if you went and followed her on Instagram, like, literally her whole feed is just interior decorating crap. Um, and she's this extra. And they're rich, so they get to be this extra more so than regular Filthy people. Rich. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and I was watching a, um, a story where they were touring houses to buy in Deer Valley. Oh, my God. Like... These are not houses. These are like something that fucking Mitt Romney would sell. Like it's unreal how ins- that would be a second home. And they have multiple like, homes. Oh my god! I heard that they were going to get another one, or did get another one in Park City, which is a super ritzy area here in Utah. Um, so they Steetown. do have multiple. They have multiple homes because I think. I think there was like some talk about how they had multiple homes, so they like gave one to one of their kids or some. There, there's like all kinds of crazy shit with oh these. My God. But let's talk about this. Is one of the people that I do want to talk about the kind of toxic things that are happening um, here. I think a lot of the problem with these people is summed up in two words: white privilege. Um, Oof. that's kind of the extent in my mind in the controversy that I read about these people of what goes on is just blissful unawareness of what is going on around you (laughs) 
and lack of compassion. Um, and really, I feel like with these, and like we're poor, so obviously I'm biased, but <laughs> I feel like with these people, they kind of forget what it's like for other people. Like what it's like to not be millionaires and what it's like to not be this extra. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel like or they get like, stuck in that. They, they probably forget like the parable of the rich young ruler. I don't know. Mormons believe they read the Bible. I don't know if her version just has that blacked out or what. Other thing to keep in mind, and this is something to keep in mind with all the influencers that we talk about, is part of being able to go into the temple and fully participate in all the blessings of Mormonism is paying tithing. And that's 10% of your income. Imagine for a whatever moment. whatever that company sale was. 10% of whatever this bitch makes off of Instagram. And she does sponsored posts and content like nobody's business. So just keep in mind when you're supporting these Mormon influencers that if they truly are participating in all the caveats of Mormonism, which some of them may not, but as a reminder, if you want to enter the temple, you have to pay tithing. She might be paying that uh, sponsorship money that you're per, you are. You're paying her. She's She's paying paying to the Mormon church, the church. And remember the church does not use that money for good. They put ads on our videos. They don't People know what they're doing. People watching our videos are not going to church, the Mormon church. They lobby they against gay marriage and all kinds of just, they won't pass the ERA. Like that. Yep. Just think about that. Okay. Other weird things about her. And this is, we don't usually get political on this channel, but I'm going to give out this information and you do with this information what you will. There's two things I've learned since watching her for the last little while for research purposes. One is she's pretty much an anti-masker. When the they live in Dallas. I hate that that is political. And when they, when the governor came out and said, like, I think it was an outright all mask, no more ban, like we're not banning masks or we're not requiring people to wear them anymore and now you don't have to. And she was like, posting on Instagram stories, how grateful she was that they weren't requiring people to wear masks anymore. And they were also traveling to lavish weddings and parties in the middle of the pandemic and live in there separate from reality life. And then, like I said, we tend to not get political on this channel and I'm just going to give you this information and you're just going to do with this what you will. But these people did max out the personal contributions that you can make to PACs and people running for elections, which most recently was Donald Trump. Um, They maxed out their donations. So So if that's not the kind of person you want to support, you know, do with that as you will. Just keep that in mind. Also, they have some weird stuff about, like, sugar and things. Like, she talks about frequently how they never eat, they don't eat any refined carbs, like nothing, which explains why her and all her daughters are, like, this big. Um, There's nothing wrong with being thin. Why go hard on, like, all the Christmas candy and shit like that? Then That makes sense Well, that's the thing that people hate on them for is they have these, like, elaborate cakes and, like, you know, these crazy, like goodies and cookies at like all their events and shit and everybody's like it's a waste because they're not even eating it like you know they make it for the cute little instagram photo and then they throw it away that's gross like (laughs) oh so in contrast if jordan leaves her pizza crust i will eat it like (laughs) i just hate to see it go to waste (laughs) So the other part of the food thing is during one of her stories, and I think she casually mentioned it, and I'm sure she regrets it because some people were like, what the hell? During one of her stories when she was talking about something within her house, um, she was talking about how one of her kids wanted like a more expensive type of gift, um, which nothing is expensive for them like seriously these people don't look like they have a budget and she was like the child earned it by not eating sugar for a year 
what what, what was it a mclaren i think like, it was like an atv okay <laughs> so that's not a huge fan of that yeah cutting back on sugar is cool cutting out sugar completely is cool if that's the i mean but like as motivation for getting what you want is uh, yeah no i don't know i don't feel that. like that's appropriate to instill in a child that's my personal parenting style i would not impose that on my child that to me is not there's lots of research about what restrictive dieting does to people so that wouldn't exactly be my go-to so that's just a little bizarre no. So, and I'm not just pulling all this maybe Mormon crap out of my butt because I confirmed that one of her daughters did get married in the temple because I watched her wedding video. She did get married in the temple in June of this year. So, there you go. Well, that's they also super recent. had the Harry Anderson picture. No other Christian in their right mind would have that picture. No, in there. that is like Mormon as it gets. It's, yeah. So, as my. the Utah desert, like honestly. True. <laughs> As my parting gift, as I eat my microphone, as my parting, <laughs> as my parting gift to you about Turtle Creek Lane, I present to you this photo that I will have McKay put up that was literally the best thing that's ever happened. Jen is storing. I don't remember if she, I think she was in a hotel. She's doing Instagram stories, right? And she's talking into the camera. And she's like, good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. And in the back, behind her, there is a nightstand. On the nightstand. On the nightstand. I can't even talk. This is so funny. On the nightstand, there is a giant vibrator. Magic wand, y'all. We're not talking, like, the big one. Okay? Obviously, the expensive one. Because, you know obviously because why not so she talks <laughs> she does stories with the vibrator in the background for like a while and then all of her followers and the internet goes crazy because this is like one Whoa, she's mormon, mormon so people lady. are like <gasps> clutch pearls <gasps> is that a or possibly not even know what it is <laughs> mind you remember when this is not like a standard thing mormons aren't like explicitly not allowed to use toys in the bedroom but remember if you followed us for a long time when mckay and i got married our stake president who had to sign off on our little thing in order for us to get married told us to not use tools in the bedroom equipment or machinery he said those things to us verbatim i'm not we are not not making that shit up that was one of the first things that we talked about on tiktok and that video got millions of views because it was so freaking bizarre that he said those things machinery tools okay so uh, it's a cultural thing it's not an explicit thing within mormonism but the story goes viral everybody makes a big deal out of it i don't know if she explicitly addressed it but she did end up putting a swipe up link to the vibrator (laughs) (laughs) so as much as i do not like this woman she took it and ran with it and I hats off to you. I would not expect a Mormon woman with a conservative following to be like, here's a link to my vibrator. So I kind of give hats off to her for Get just yours, lady. embracing it. Good and job. Being like, here you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So Turtle Creek Lane, honestly, is it's like an anomaly. And of course, it's this polished life. So what kind of part of what we're always saying with this little series is that it's a good thing for the church to have these people who have this polished lifestyle and even when they're covert in this kind of situation where she doesn't really explicitly post that they're mormon but if people find out then they're like wow look at all this extravagant stuff that they have going on in their lives and they're Mormon. That's crazy. Like, so if you're looking for some sort of connection or a pattern, which our brains naturally like to do, you might put two and two together. And obviously not everybody's going to be like, oh, wow, maybe I should join the Mormon church because it can get me to be rich. But obviously there's some sort of allure to think this lady's got everything put together really nicely. If that's your kind of thing. <laughs> not for me. When we but- first started doing TikTok, which was... It feels like a while ago, but it, what was that like? Like 
February. Yeah. When we first started doing TikTok and people started asking us questions about Mormons, one of the most common questions we would get is why are so many Mormons influencers? Like, why are there so many rich Mormon influencers? Like, what the hell? Like, there is so many of them that so many, like, people who don't even have any connection to Mormonism have, like, made some kind of connection between, like, why are so many of these women Mormons? rich? Like, and why, like... It's so it's like it's so common that even people who don't know anything about it are like, this is weird. Yeah. Like this is like continually happening. What is going on? What I think it kind of boils down to is just, you know, fewer Mormon influencers and all of them happen to be rich. Whereas there's like a bunch of rich, just plain Jane Christians or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, uh, all of those rich people going to like Bethel and stuff like that. Like yeah. nobody's like pointing that out explicitly because there's a bunch of celebrities that go to churches like that. But then there's like a lot of, of very few of them that are Mormons. So it, it seems well, like they're very out. like Mormon light. Like they're very, it's typical Mormonism family connection. Right. So when people part of what the church promotes within marketing is when you're like, they want Mormon to be tied with family. Like they want those two things to go together and be associated with each other. That's the whole kind of perk of Mormonism. Right. And so the amount of influencers, it's not just like always, Hey, look at me. It's the appeal that I find for most people is the family aspect for many of these influencers, it's about their kids. It's about their spouse. It's like, this is a family affair. This isn't just one cute, like Mormon girl that you follow on Instagram. At least not. I mean, there's plenty of those, right? But the majority of them who have the really big followings do family type content. Like, and it's empire based, like with Jen and her family, all of her kids are part of this situation like one of her daughters just surprised her um husband with a tesla like and not to say that they don't have their own jobs and make their own money but when you come from this i mean makes a lot easier makes it a hell of a lot easier so then again we have this whole it's like we talked about with the family vloggers last time we have this whole empire yeah this whole empire of Mormons that are and like influencers, influencers that are making shit tons of money off of sponsored content and shit. Not to mention, which I forgot about this, not to mention her response during because they live in Texas. And when Texas had that crazy like blizzard and power grid failure and all year. of that that was going on and it was like, you know devastating to a lot of Texas because y'all out there are not prepared for snow. Um, and super cold temp. So while that was going on and there are literally people in her city who don't have power, who are freezing, who are dying. I mean, there were people who died during this. While all of this is going on, she's running sponsored content for like cleaning products. Like I think one of them was like OxyClean. In addition to that, Billy Mays here. (laughs) In addition to that, she also did during that time, a thousand dollar giveaway to one of her followers, which this just brings me back to the point of blissful ignorance and unawareness of what's going on around me and thinking that, hmm, for a moment, maybe, just maybe, I could Do donate this money that I'm getting or start a little fundraiser for my followers to raise money for the people in my community who are literally around me who desperately need it. Yeah. But instead, I'm going to give $1,000 away to one of my followers. So there's that. So unawareness. Rich people unawareness and blissfully unaware. And not to, it's probably not for lack of empathy. I'm sure she's a kind person. But when you do things like that, yeah. It just it looks bad. And a lot of people are willing to overlook that at times or maybe they don't consider like the context of what's going on and I mean, we all just like to disconnect. Yeah, but sure. Well, and I think the appeal of Jen is she's so extra. And in reality, I think there are a few people who are going to try to mimic yeah. what she's doing. Like, I don't know, like, 
we have personal family members who follow her. Yeah. And it's like, we just watch it for the shit show. Like, we just watch it to see, like, what kinds of crazy shit she puts up with every holiday. And it's like, hey, who's we? Not me. Not you. But we have family should. members. I only knew of her because of the vibrator incident. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason. But I don't, I think that's part of the draw. And we see that with the family vloggers. We see that with lots of Mormon influencers yeah. is a lot of them are shit shows and people are like, I hate watch. Like, I don't watch it because I like authentically like them and who they are. I watch it because sometimes it's a dumpster fire. Which you shouldn't do. Because <laughs> then you're, you're yeah. giving them your, your money with your views. So don't and do your that. Time. Don't waste your time on people like that. It no. It doesn't work. And you if, may be surprised to find out that uh, uh, we talk so much shit on all these people, and when I'm not doing it, I don't give them a second thought. Honestly, I could care less. I could not care less. And this is, we're just going off of based on the information that people present to the world. Like, this is how she chooses to present herself and her family. This is how they choose to interact. Not saying that they're terrible people. I'm sure that they're very nice. I'm sure that they're probably nice people and nice Mormons in their community if they go to church. And I'm sure all of those things are true. But all of this information that I've shared with you is also like the election donations is verifiable. You can go look it up right now. So that information is also out there. So if you don't want people to call you out for stuff like this, and this is what bothered me so much about the Norfolk South video and all the videos that we'll probably do going forward is if you don't want people to call you out on shit, don't put it on the internet. Don't put it on the internet. It's literally that fuck. And people are like, oh, you don't know the whole story. Oh, do you? Are you? They're put. This is what they're putting out. And this is what I can see. And I can judge off of that. If they don't want me to judge it, maybe give more context, which I don't condone, especially in the vloggers sense, because that just means you're just putting more of your children out there, <laughs> which was the main argument that I was trying to make. Or don't do it at all. It's that simple. It's that simple. And I understand people make the argument, nobody's perfect. And neither are we. And if people found shit about us that they didn't like and they did a video and called us out, then... Go for it. I don't care. Because that's the nature of what you're doing when you're on a public platform like this. Like, that's... We don't ever rule that out as being a possibility. Like... Yeah. People talk shit on us all the time. We're not acting like we're not fair game. No. <laughs> not at all. We're just simply trying to say that this information is out there. And if you're going to continually elevate yourself on a public platform, then you need to be prepared for this type of thing to happen. Because not everybody, and we get the same thing, not everybody's going to look upon you with kind eyes. There are people who are going to be critical of what you do and the decisions you make. Yeah. And when you broadcast your life to 600,000 people, then... Make less mistakes or... When you leave your vibrator on your table, I mean, I'm sure she was mortified. I'm sure she was absolutely mortified. Probably. But I think it's hilarious. That is pretty funny. So Instagram, th this is just the one. Um, just one of the other... There, there's like a a couple different genres of Mormon Instagram influencers, which we'll, we'll talk more about. Uh, we want to talk about Bucket List Fam. We've done some digging on them and some other people who are like more outwardly Mormon and it's a little more obvious and things like that. So, um, but this one was Creek reserved Lane, for, <laughs> yeah. And we, I was kind of planning on talking about those other ones in the same video, but there was a lot to comment on in this, <laughs> in this video. So this, these people aren't the worst, but they're disconnected from reality at best. Um, and time. they're possibly giving a lot of money to the Mormon church. So when you, I mean, I wouldn't want my money going to a contribution that I wouldn't approve of on things like this, especially if it was a voluntary time contribution of mine. But so the thing that's is, just me. That's just the thing is the information, especially with a lot of the influencers is that information doesn't get put out there, you know? They don't, influencers don't put their election donations on their profile for a reason. Um, but those things are public. And so don't yeah. give your time or your sponsored ad clicky swipe up things 
to somebody if they don't align with your morals. So that is simply what we're trying to present to you is that a lot of these people who seemingly are just like Christian faith having people it might go a little deeper than that. I wouldn't yeah. know that she's Mormon just by looking at her feed. And I'm not saying hate on all Mormons. That's not the point of this. We're just providing you information. Just providing you information. You get to do what you want with that information. Yeah. I'm sure her we've fans. Already, we've already talked about the kind of stuff that the Mormon church perpetuates that this person may not have even signed up for from birth, but just ended up getting into that because that's all she knows. Remember the stances of the Mormon church. Typically Mormons align themselves with those, with those standards, which include, you know, anti LGBTQ um, rhetoric, racist rhetoric. Um, so if you want us to take or want to see us deep dive on some more Instagrammers, stay tuned, hit that subscribe button. If you would like some cool new t-shirts, which are just launching, um, you can check those out in the description. It's the Teespring link. I'll probably put it at the top this time. Um, if you want to join our Patreon, we would love to have you over there. We do monthly zoom calls with our top tier patrons so come check it out shouts out to the discord as well we love our discord homies um uh, we do a lot of uh conversing and it's probably one of the easiest and quickest ways to get in touch with us if you have a question or you would like to tell me how dumb my forehead looks or, or how fat of, we are yeah the, the latter one happened, uh, not in a Discord, but on a YouTube comment. So congratulations, Lauren. No last name, no profile picture. Made your uh, profile this week. You are so cool. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> it really it really hurt me inside. It really did. Really? I'm so hurt. Oh, Owie. my God. So if you stuck around, thank you for sticking around, and we will see you next time. 